So hello, friends. Blessing and peace on you. Welcome, guys, to episode 313. Like, what? Like, yes, 313. And uh, we are here today. And today, guys, I have my very special guest, Pastor Alan DeDio from Encounter Today is going to be joining me. I'm sorry for uh, coming on five minutes late, but we've been we've been trying to overcome some technical difficulties here, and it looks like my team has got it covered. And I'm so grateful for everybody stepping and fetching and trying to get it all done, guys. Uh, today I'm going to be talking to my good friend Alan DeDio, and we're going to be talking about our conference that is coming up here on Friday night and on Saturday morning in Charlotte area. My goodness, for all my friends that are out on the East Coast, I cannot wait to see you cats. It's called the Final Hour End Time Prophecy Conference, and it's going to be a hoot. And uh, I think probably the thing I'm looking forward to the most is the Saturday at 1130. I think that we're having questions and answers and all kinds of things like that. And uh, I love questions and answers. And if you are brand new to uh, the prophetic life. If you're somebody that's joining us across our, our platforms today, like, what is this? This is something that we do every Tuesday and every Wednesday with all of my partners that are signed up and hooked up with us to fight and to take on hell with a water pistol and to live a defiant life of joy at odx.tv. And I want to tell you, if you're missing these things, you've already missed 313 hours of talking about every kind of, uh, gosh, Guys, the content that we do on here is so diverse because I'm interested in a whole lot of different things. But guys, we actually just bring it. What does the Word of God say? And how does that work for me? Okay, I mean, whenever I walk this out, man, this is what I do. And so whenever you sign up for stage two on odx.tv, not only do you get all of this content, but you also get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of everything else that is on there, including the exclusive content that is on there. So be sure and look at that. Uh, Miss Lisa, I see that we have friends all over the planet Earth that are joining us. If you guys will indeed tell us where it is that you're watching from, uh, we'll try and give a, a, a hard shout out to you and we'll do the best that we can with that. Guys, joining me from across the continent <laughs> is my good friend, Brother Alan DeDio. Hello, Brother Alan. How are you, sir? What's up, Pastor Troy and all the ODX family? Man, we're so excited to connect with you here today oh. and to have you come to the Carolinas. Man, we're never going to be the same after this weekend. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. And I want to ask you, man, before I come out there and see you, whenever you decide to put together this conference, why did you decide to do this? And what do you think is going to happen, man? Well, there is a, an, an unparalleled fascination with the end times, not just among the church, but among backslidden Christians, among unbelievers. You see it on the History Channel. You see it on uh, all these different secular stations. And what I've noticed is a void in the spirit-filled community. It seems like uh, m many of our Baptist brothers and sisters and others and other denominations, even the Reformed, people are talking about the end times. But the spirit-filled community isn't talking about it. We love to talk about the mm. prophetic but we never get to the root of the sure word of prophecy concerning our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I said, let's let's do a pro let's do a conference where we dig deep into end time Bible prophecy so that everyone can know the hour that we're living in. And so I, I was looking at my wish list: who could I get to come to the conference? And you were about you know 156 down the list. Everyone else said no, um, and then Troy Brewer said yes. So, <laughs> no, that's actually that's, that well. the inverse is true. <laughs> If that could have anybody come talk about the end times, it would be Troy Brewer. So that's why we have you coming out for this. Uh, I can't wait to do it, man, because I want to talk about timelines. I want to talk about, um, we're actually going to be doing how, we're actually going to be doing something like a star party uh, on, uh, I think probably Friday night. I'm bringing part of my media team out there with me and we're going to bring a ton of stuff. Uh, we're going to actually discover what the will within the will is. Wow. And uh, we're, I'm, I'm going to be showing it to you within the heavens. And then how does that line up with end time prophecy and what does that mean? And guys, I want to just tell you this, Jesus is coming back soon. And Pastor Alan, and I know that you know Jesus is coming back soon, and there will be signs in the sun and the moon, the sun and the moon and the stars. That's what King Jesus Himself said. And he also said that as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the return of the Son of Man. And whenever Jesus comes back, I want to tell you, uh, He's going to stomp out some stuff. He's going to tread out the grapes of wrath, and He's not coming back as a six-pound baby Jew in a manger. He's coming back as a King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the Alpha and the Omega and the first. First and the last, and he ain't playing. 
Mm. I'm telling you right now, he ain't planned. And it requires a loyalty and a fear of the Lord from us today. If we want to be the kind of people that actually have oil in our lamps and what all does that mean? So I'm going to be talking about, I'm going to be talking through those lines. And then on Saturday, uh, or at one of those times, I'm, or, or it's at, at some point, I want to actually talk about the end time deception of all things trans and why oh, wow. that is a big deal. And uh, that's a big part of as it was in the days of Noah. And I can't wait to talk to everybody about the seed war and the uh, the whole thing and how it all comes to this big place right before Jesus comes back that the Lord himself has to come back. So we're going to be talking about those kinds of things. What are you going to talk about? Well, I pray to start something. I'm believing this is going to create a domino effect of spirit-filled communities and we're going to do this across the country in jesus name with you and different speakers and we're going to have these conferences just to dig down into this i was looking at the stats earlier today there are 1189 chapters in the bible 1189 Mm -hmm. 66 books right 66 sermons but 1189 chapters in those there are 10,300 references to the second advent of jesus christ the coming of the lord jesus christ That means for every one chapter, statistically, there are 10 references to the coming of the Lord, the hour in which we're living in. This is how important this message is. And Pastor Troy, I believe as I've kind of talked with people, there's a there's a drifting away from orthodox eschatology. There's a drifting away from the, the understanding that we know concerning the timeline of the end, our blessed hope. And I'm discovering that it is not because people are fed up or they don't like the rapture. It's not because they don't like Bible prophecy. Their argument has been they don't like the way it's been presented. They don't like kind of the fear mongering or the sensationalism or the date setting. And that's turned them off to the core central message of Jesus. When Jesus taught about this, he we only have 30 days of his life recorded in the Gospels. 30 days, if you pile up all the incidents that are recorded, we have about 30 days of Jesus' life that are actually mentioned. And in those 30 days, he talks about his second coming. I've got the stat right here, 20 times his his return. The disciples were encouraged 50 times to watch for his coming. And so we're losing that in the body of Christ. And I want believers to begin to understand the hour we're living in, how late it is, and then that's going to inspire their evangelism. It's going to inspire their faithfulness in church. It's going to inspire uh, everything that that we know to be beneficial for the Christian life. So that's why we're doing this. Oh, man, that's good, Pastor Allen. That's absolutely, well, it's right on track with who you are and how you live your life and how your ministry works. I know one of the things that I see all over the world is people ask me about numbers that preach. They'll say, hey, why am I seeing 1111 everywhere? Why do I see 1111 everywhere I go? What in the wide, wide world of sports is all that about? And I tell them final hour is what it's all about. Mm. Jesus is coming back soon. Right. So 11. Right. So we're talking about, you know, final hour. And I also recognize that in this year that with a 23 stamped upon it, amen, that we also are recognizing, hey, you know what? The hour is late is so real that this is a final hour type time. And we need to know how to walk with King Jesus, how to look forward towards things. And the church needs to get really good at demonstrating, preaching and displaying hope. This is how to hope. The Bible doesn't say when you see these things begin to happen, everybody freak out and get on Prozac. That's not what it says. It says when you see these things begin to happen, look up for your redemption draweth nigh. And I'm going to tell you guys, our Redeemer lives and he is coming back soon. And until I want to tell you, until the moment that I hear the trumpet blow and my feet begin to lift off, I want to tell you, this brother right here is going to be loyal to King Jesus. I'm going to be full of the word of God. I'm going to be full of the fear of the Lord. I'm going to be full of the spirit of the Lord. And I'm going to be pointing at things saying, now the kingdom of heaven looks just like this. And for everybody who's distraught and freaking out, you know, I love what Jesus says to the two to the two disciples on the way to Animaeus, he says things like this. He says, oh, you know, you're, you're, you're so slow to believe the scriptures. It was all planned out. It was yeah. all in the word of God. And guys, that's exactly what we're saying about this day that all of us are living in. Yeah, you're so slow to believe the scriptures. He's referring to prophecies concerning him. Then what we see in the Gospels, when Jesus right. weeps, he's weeping because they don't understand Bible prophecy concerning him. That's right. And then when we get to the testimony, right. when you talk about how people are just kind of turned off about end-time prophecy teaching, here's what I want. I want people to fall in love 
with the second advent of Jesus Christ. I want people to fall in love because the Bible said here, I've got it right here in front of me in second Timothy chapter number three or four chapter four, verse eight. He says, there's a crown laid up for all those who love his appearing. And I think Satan is trying to steal this crown because you know what happens immediately after the rapture of the church, we have the judgment seat of Christ. And I think the enemy is trying to rob believers of their crown. And what the conference like this is going to do, it's going to make sure that you qualify for the crown. Mm, man, that's good. That's Come really on, somebody good write, stuff. Qualify for the you crown know, in the comments. Qualify for the crown. Write that down. Man, that's really good. Somebody somebody, type that out. Um, whenever I, I, I've done a huge study on the crowns, and I love the crowns. And one of my, there's this incredible crown in the heavens. It's one of the 88 constellations. It's called Corona the Crown. Mm -hmm. And Serpines the Serpent is after it. It's, the, the, it's, it's, it's trying to get it. And of course, King Jesus says, see that no man steals your crown. And I want to tell you from the very beginning, this has been in the heavens. And friends, I want to tell you, for him that overcomes, there are 17 promises in the book of Revelation and for, for him that overcomes, him that to, to, to the people who endure to the end, to the people who remain loyal to the Lord, to the people who are looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of their faith. He says, I have a crown for you. I do. I've mm -hmm. got something amazing for you. And uh, yeah, well, I, look, I look forward to the day that I can throw that crown at the feet of King Jesus. You know, brother, I had an encounter with the Lord years and years ago. Uh, around 2015 is when I had this encounter with the Lord. And it started off as a dream. And then it turned off, it turned into this whole incredible encounter I had with the Lord. But I actually saw the Lord in this encounter that I had with him. I saw King Jesus. And when I saw him, I was looking at his helmet. He was wearing a war helmet because he was showing up in this vision of the Lord that I had. He was showing up to actually go to war for me. And he was wearing, it was a crown in the front, but it was a helmet in the back. And as I was looking at his helmet, I instantly saw a picture in heaven. And I saw that he has a, I saw that he has a dressing room and I saw that he has an entire crown room. And then I instantly knew that every time the Lord steps into something, he wears a different crown and they're all crowns of faith that people have given to him. Uh. And I instantly saw that on the last day when Jesus comes back, that he takes all those crowns and he forms them into one single crown and puts it on his head. And I later discovered the scripture that says that when Jesus comes back, he is wearing many crowns. Mm. Well, I saw that he takes every crown that he has and he puts it into one crown. These are all trophies of grace. These are all things that people have done for him. And he wears this victory upon his head as he comes back. Wow. So I actually saw that. I saw that in an encounter with the Lord. So that reminds me of a vision our friend, Dr. Parsley had 40 years ago. Now this is going to blow your audience mind, by the way, go ahead and search and Google plane tickets from wherever you are to Charlotte, North Carolina. Those of you that are watching this, it's not as expensive as you think it is. And we got people coming from all across the country. Pastor, we got people coming from Canada, from India. They're coming to be a part of the wow. final hour end time prophecy conference. It's going to be, it's going to be amazing. So I just shared this with my congregation. I think this is pivotal. Dr. Rod Parsley, 40 years ago, nearly 40 years ago to this, to this year, he was in his little church before it became, you know, the mega ministry that we now know and love. And the back wall disappeared in the middle of a worship service. And he saw this hideous, grotesque, demonic figure. And on its head was a crown. And, he, and it was glistening and glittering. And he looked closer. And as he looked closer, the crown was the skyline of the city of Columbus, Ohio. And there was a voice that spoke out of heaven and said, the enemy wears this city like a crown. And then a sword appeared and swung three times and struck the enemy across the back of the knees. And he fell down on his knees and the crown rolled off of his head. And the voice said, who among you is bold enough and brave enough to pick up the crown and place it on the head of Jesus? And then the vision disappeared. Wow. I'm telling you, I believe that's a word for right now for the city of Charlotte for the city of Burleson, for Fort Worth, Dallas. I think this is a word the enemy's been wearing. Our city's like a crown, and it's time to pick up that crown and put it on the head of Jesus. Mm, brother, that is a good word. That is a good, good, good word. Um, 
I think a lot about crowns. I think a lot about authority. I think about crowns and I think about keys a whole lot. And I also just think about, you know, how, how does all that work in the kingdom? And how in the world can we, you know, we're, we, we do a work all over the world, as you very well know. And as, as do you, you know, you're reaching people right now all over the planet Earth, which is incredible. Uh, and it's, it's actually remarkable. Our teams are trying to learn from you guys. With that said, we also know what it means here. Like, what exactly is the crown? I mean, what what is that? Is it a is it a selfless act of redemption? It is. Is it is it? I'm about to go through all kinds of different things that it is. But the bottom line is this: it's where Jesus Christ rules and reigns. It's mm-hmm. where his authority is. It's where heaven invades earth. It's where it's where something looks a whole lot more like heaven than it looks like hell because Jesus gets to rule and reign in that place or in that situation or in that person's life or in that certain scenario that the Lord brings us to. Here's what I can tell you is this, man. The devil hates those crowns and the devil wants those crowns and the devil wears those crowns and he goes after those things. And a lot of it has to do with simply our non-participation within kingdom things. And if the body of King Jesus thinks, hey man, we're gonna get through this day without understanding what the word of God says about end time theology. If people think that, oh man, it's just pie in the sky. The whole thing about Jesus is coming back. That's just, you know, that's ridiculous. And I wanna tell you, no, 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 no. This is basic one-on-one Christianity. And friends, we gotta get back to the word of God. And me and Pastor Allen are gonna be going after that this week. Well, and and to speak to that, when Paul started the church at Ephesus, he spent three years planning that church. When he planted the church at Corinth, he spent two years planning that church. But when he planted the church at Thessalonica, he only had about three to nine weeks that he was there to plant that church. So the question has to be then, the Apostle Paul is planting a church. What does he focus on if he only has three weeks to plant this thing? And when you study the history of it, you find out he focused primarily on on end time events, the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the rapture of the church. And people say, well, that's, you know, that's not for new believers or that's not, no, no, no. This is how you become a strong Christian. This is how you walk in your authority. You know, the equivalent of the crown in the courtroom is a gavel. I even have in my office, I have it right here. (laughs) I have a gavel so I can overrule the, I I even have these made their own website. It says on there, we had them custom made. I have Luke 10, 19 authority in Christ so that we can just tell the enemy just to shut up and to overrule the works of the enemy and to declare in Jesus' name that we have the authority. And when you understand the end times and you understand who Jesus is, then you understand who it is that's living on the inside of you. When the Bible says greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world, you don't have any idea what what it's talking about until you read Revelation 19. That's who's on the inside of you. That same, that same cat that's on a white horse with eyes like fire and out of his mouth proceeded a sharp two-edged sword that with it he should smite the nations. That's who lives on the inside of you. So a study of the end times helps us understand our authority and who we are as we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. All right, friends, listen, I, I, I want to see you guys in Charlotte, North Carolina. I want y'all to come out. If you live anywhere in any way that you can get there to that place, I mean, come on out, man. I double dog dare you to come out and be a part of that. Uh, Pastor Allen, how do people get tickets for that? They can go to EncounterToday.com, and the registration's free. We just need to know that you're coming because space is limited. Uh, you can awesome. certainly, if you want, you can awesome. purchase VIP tickets, and you'll get some gifts and some other things that is going to make it worthwhile. You'll have reserved seating for you. You can do that if you want, but if you if you don't want to do that, then registration's absolutely free, and that's at EncounterToday.com. Let us know you're coming so we can be ready for you. Friends, I want to encourage you guys to do that. Go there. And then also, too, I want to say this. For ever, for all of our stage three partners here at ODX.TV, you know what? You guys know that you get these things streamed in every single conference that I do. If it's available for us to stream in, you guys get to watch that live. And that is a part. It's also free. It just goes with your partnership. And I really look forward to doing that. And I cannot wait until we do that. Let, let me ask you this, Pastor Troy. How many Spirit-filled prophecy conferences do you know of currently? Well, there's not much. There's, I'm trying to think not. of one. I'm trying to think of one. So this is why people need to get a plane ticket. You've got to support this. You've got to be a part of this. This is historic what we're doing. And I, I think that as we gather together, being at the tip of the spear is going to matter. And everyone who's going to be at this conference is mm. at the tip of the spear. Reintroducing this 
into the into the psyche of the spirit filled community. So good. So good. Well, I want to tell you, I, one of the things, uh, so I want to talk a little bit just to you about, you know, like even this week, I, I'm, I'm, I'm constantly seeing the Lord in the headlines and the Lord is, the word of God is prophetically, painfully obvious if if you have an eye to see and if you have an ear to hear. And I mean, the terrible events that happened in Nashville this week, um, like, okay, hey, I want to ask you this. Pastor Allen, if you had a dream and if there was a place that was called Covenant and a transgender person came in there and came after the kids to murder the kids, and if the name of the person was Hell, would you, would you have a clue as to what that, that means? Oh my <laughs> I mean, would you have to call? Would you have to call a special counsel and say, "Man, I can't, I can't figure this out." No, no, you would know exactly. It's the place of covenant. It's after kids, and the name is hell. Like, okay, well, that's there. You go. Okay, whenever I look at that, I'm looking at the headlines as well every single day, and everything that I see from one from one place to another place to another place is screaming. Jesus Christ is screaming through the headlines. I'm coming sooner than you think. I'm coming a whole lot sooner than you actually think. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be. And I'm coming soon. I'm coming soon. And do I have a bride that is mm. ready? Do I have a bride that is looking for me? It's one thing to have a bride. But it's another thing to have a bride that is waiting anxiously every single day. So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking. And that's the parable of the, the five foolish virgins and yes. the five other virgins. And that's what that parable is because they were all brides of the Lord. But there was only five that their entire life was about looking for the imminent and the glorious return of the king. Um, I think that a lot of people are willing to believe that Jesus is coming back. But they're not willing to believe that he's coming back right now. They, they, they cannot believe that Jesus would come in and interrupt the things within their life because they just don't have a grid for it. We've got to reintroduce this. Well, that's the most important aspect of New Testament prophecy, isn't it? That there's an eminence, and that's what was taught repeatedly. I, I say this until I'm blue in the face because it doesn't seem like even some of the greatest theologians of our day have grasped this. I even wrote an article um, last year, 22 scriptural proofs that Jesus could return at any moment. And we have that available at EncounterToday.com in our blog. Scriptures that show that at any moment Jesus could return and that imminence is supposed to equip us. And what modern theology has done is it has robbed us of that anticipation that is supposed to guard us against the end time deception. And so I, I'm so excited about the Saturday morning session as you break this down, because I've never heard of anyone talk about it in that sense where you look at, a, at an event that has taken place and you look at it as if it were a prophetic dream. What meaning would you pull from it? I've, I've never heard anyone break anything down like that. So I'm, I'm so excited that you're going to dig into that with us because this is so important. And of course, what the modern media is trying to do is they're trying to say that this they're going to attach it to conservatives, they're going to attach it to the Second Amendment, they're not reporting what's actually happened, who actually did this. And I'm, I'm so excited you're going to be taking the cover off that this Saturday. Well, I am. And we're going to do a lot of talking. And we're also going to have a special time of question and answers. And here in just a minute, uh, uh, Pastor, we're going to actually switch over and we're going to look at questions that people have and comments that people have. And I'm going to go through this. Lisa's highlighting some for me right now. And I'm going to go through there and I'm going to look at these things and we're going to answer some of those. But I... I, I just got to just, yeah, I live life saying if that was a dream, what would it mean? I mean, if you had a wow. dream and if there was a president and if his name was Abraham and if his last name was Lincoln, if you, you look those things up and let's say he was the 16th president, had the big number 16 stamped upon him and he was at a place that was literally called Fords. It's where you cross a river. And if he, and if he was murdered by a guy named John, Wilkes Booth, and if he if he was shot on the 14th of April, and if he died on the 15th of April, if you had a dream of all that, would you be willing to look those things up? Well, you this is not a dream. This is something that actually that's a true historical event that all of us are familiar with, and it's you know the assassination of the president of the United States. And then if you want to go 47 years into the future, we have a boat that is called 
Titanic, and they say God himself could not sink it, and it struck an iceberg on the 14th, and then it sank on the 15th of April. Hmm. Just exactly like the 16th president of the United States. And I, I'm, I'm about to just start going off on that craziness. But what I'm saying is this. When I look at the headlines, I'm looking at what is the voice within the thunder? Why? And most people just say a thunder. So most people only hear a natural event, but they do not hear the voice of the Lord within the natural event. And everything that Jesus is saying today, everything that the Spirit is saying, he's saying this, hold fast, take ground, occupy, because I'm coming back. Wow. And so, I, I hope that people have an ear to hear it. So there's, there's three responses then based on that scripture you just made. Number one, people hear thunder. There's a natural explanation for what they're hearing two, they hear angels. Some thought they heard angels. Yeah, which is this dangerous. is where people depart. Yes. They depart from scripture, yeah. which is why this prophecy conference is so essential. They depart from scripture and they go into this super spiritual. My concern for the prophecy camp of the body of Christ is this, that without a rooting, without a grounding in Bible prophecy, it will depart into that type of ridiculous extra biblical experiences. And then of course we have those who hear the voice of the Lord. And that's why it's so important for us to be scriptural. God didn't call you to be spiritual. He called you to be scriptural and scripture will make you spiritual. <laughs> so good. So guys, we're talking about end time events and I'm talking with my good friend, Pastor Alan DiDio of Encounter Today. And Pastor Alan and I are going to be together. He's invited me to come out to his conference this weekend. And if you're in the, if you can find your way to Charlotte, North Carolina, guys, we're going to be there on Friday night and on Saturday morning. And uh, my goodness, it is going to be a time. So Pastor Alan, I'm actually, I'm actually going to go through how the heavens declare the glory of God. We're going to be talking about end time prophecy and how that the heavens are shaken. I'm going to show everybody how that works. I'm going to show everybody exactly what the will within the will is. And that's, oh, that, that has to do with the heavens as well. Yes. And it has to do with the face of a lion, the face of a man, the face of a bull and the face of an eagle. And we're going to be talking about that as well. And then we're going to, we're actually going to look at some tremendous celestial events that's going to be taking place uh, this year and next year and how the heavens declare the glory of God, including the tremendous, guys, there is this incredible um, eclipse that's going to happen on October the 14th this year that enters into a place called Gardner, Oregon, and then it goes across and it ends at a place called Corpus Christi, Texas. And we know that Corpus Christi means the body of Christ. And so it starts off in the garden. It ends in Corpus Christi. It is a word for the church. The heavens declare the glory of God. But again, you're going to have to hear the voice within the thunder. And then, of course, on April the 14th of next year, we have the second great American eclipse that is going to be taking place. And it ends a seven-year cycle that began in August of 2021. And I'm sorry, of August of uh, 2017. And I want to just tell you, if you don't think that this is a seven-year cycle, you better wake up because, uh, friends, it is. There, You're like, well, these things happen all the time. The last time that there was a great American eclipse, the last time, which means what what that means is it means that the only place the shadow touched was American soul. Like, well, that happens all the time. No, last time it happened was in 1776, which serious? was the birth of our nation. Yeah. So I'm telling you, it's a big deal. And now these ones are seven, these ones are seven years apart. And just in case it, that you're not sure that it's the Lord, it happens on April the 14th, ending that seven year cycle. And that will be Passover next year. And you're unpacking yeah. all this this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to be unpacking all this, and we're going to be talking about it and just say, hey, man, we need to be able to see what everybody else doesn't see. We need to be able to hear what everybody else doesn't hear. We need to be excited about the day that we live in. Friends, we get a front row seat to the greatest show on earth, the glorious and the imminent return of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm going to be a faithful bride. I'm going to be all about it. I'm going to wrap my head around it. I'm going to study it. And again, one of the things, Pastor Allen, one of the reasons why there's been a big falling away um, from people looking for the return of King Jesus is because um, so many people have discovered so many different layers of revelation and they bump it into and they dismiss the plain gospel, uh. the the. The simple gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm guys, not only do we have to believe that Jesus is coming back, but we have to believe he can come back at any second. We have to believe that. And if not, then we're not going to be prepared for the day that we live in. And uh, 
These are shining times. They're tough times. And you, you're not going to be able to uh, uh, skillfully avoid tough days. You're not going to be able to do that. And I know that you'd like to, I know that, uh, you know, everybody in the world, Hey man, let's just pass another marijuana law. That way, man, we can all, we just don't got to be worried about it. Everything's going to be fine. We'll all just chill out and it all be good, man. You are not crowned according to how skillfully you avoid a mess. Hmm. You're not crowned according to that, man. You got to take on hell with a water pistol and say, okay, man, I am good for the day that I'm living in today. Jesus can count on me. My family can count on me. My church can count on me. My nation can count on me. I will, I am walking with King Jesus because I'm the friend of God. Yeah. This generation is ready for a fight and they they, they can't stomach a passive spirit. And a lot of times <laughs> proper eschatology has been attached to a weakling escape is a mentality that, okay, we're just going to get out of here. I just got to get out of here. You know, Lord, just take us, Lord, just take us now. A instead of he's coming at any moment, I got to get this job done. I want him to find me faithful. I got to occupy until he comes. I want to make sure that when he finds me, I'm advancing his kingdom. And so that's the paradigm shift that has to take place that he's coming at any moment. Therefore, We've got to engage. So we've got to get our head out of the sand and get out of this ostrich theology and get back into Bible basics. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape these things and occupy until he comes. Oh, man, that is so good, man. That is so good. Well, all right. So I am going to look through a couple. I'm going through these questions here, and I'm looking at questions and comments. And friends, if you have a question or if you have a comment, you can put it down right here. And this is something that we always do on the prophetic life. And again, today, guys, we're sharing the prophetic life across all of our platforms. Uh, we also do tons of other things like, you know, man, I'm. <laughs> there's so many things I want to talk to you about, Pastor Allen. I I. I just, I can't wait to see you face to face. I can't wait to meet all the people that's there. Yeah. I can't wait for the question and answer times. Um, I just can't wait for us to be together. There's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. People are going to leave there encouraged, blessed. It's This is going to be on for free for all of my ODX partners at the third stage level as, well as I carry all my conferences on there. And then we're going to capture a bunch of this and we'll show it all later on as well. And uh, I just can't wait. It's just going to be crazy cool. Yeah, it's going to be great to get everybody in, a, in an intimate setting. We're going to have a massive LED wall, by the way, just so you're going to really have an experience as Pastor Troy kind of walks you through all of this, all of this stuff he's laid out for you from the stars to the wheel within the middle of a wheel. It's going to be outstanding. I have a question here, and this has to do with uh, how the heavens declare the glory of God. And Dana asked, did you guys hear about the planet alignment that is happening this week? And yeah, I can speak into that. What does that mean whenever the planets line up? And that's very interesting. And it also has to do with the timing of God, God illustrating the timeline. Like, mm -hmm. well, how does that work? Well, because there are seven celestial things that we can see with our naked eyes and all seven days are actually named after one of those things. Sun, the sun and the moon, right? We have those two things. And then beginning at the sun, then we have Mercury, then we have Venus, we have the earth and that's not gonna be included in that. And then from there we have Mars and then we have Jupiter and then we have Saturn. So the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth and seventh day of the week line up with the seven wandering stars. Okay, so the wandering stars have to do with how the planets seem to move throughout the 88 different constellations that are within our firmament that God Almighty placed there to demonstrate his plan of redemption. OK, and it's like, man, you're getting off into all kinds of weird stuff. Oh, I hadn't even began. I'm just telling you this right now. But I'm, I'm telling you that the heavens declare the glory of God in the firmament shows his handiwork and day to day utter speech, not in the night. It reveals knowledge. God Almighty speaks different in the daytime than he does at nighttime. Right. And there is no language where their voice is not heard. So whether you have a Bible or you don't have a Bible, you can be out. You can be out looking at the heavens and just looking up at the spirit of the living God. Say, you see that that is a man that is pouring out water. And what that means is I will pour out my spirit upon mm. all flesh. Hey man, do you see that? Yeah, that's like, that's like a crab and it's got two claws and you need to know that you are my beloved possession. You need to know that you are my possession and I hold you in my hand and none shall pluck you out. Oh, hey man, do you see that? The Gemini twins. Look there, there's Castor and there's Pollux and there it is. When we see him, we shall be like him. Amen. Mm. Oh, look at that. He's Leo, the lion of the tribe of Judah. He's going to come back and rule and reign. Look at that. It's crazy. 
crater of the cup. He's pouring out the grapes of wrath upon the serpent. Look at that. It, it, I, I'm, I'm sorry, Pastor Allen. I'm just, I can't help it. I get stupid excited about this kind of stuff. So whenever the planets start to line up and when they're lined up in the order, that is a big deal. Now, I want to just tell you this. Last year, last year, we had the very first planetary lineup um, in uh, it's the first time in 1,700 something years where it lined up in correct order. So like, what are you talking about? Like, okay, so there was Mercury and then there was Venus, right? So you had the sun, then you had Mercury, then you had Venus, and then you had the moon, and then you had Mars, and then you had Jupiter, and you had Saturn. And it's like, oh my gosh. And it was called the Planetary Parade. Hmm. Does anybody remember the Planetary Parade that happened last year? Okay, the Planetary Parade, it was like, everybody's like, woo! The planetary, listen, and I was all about it. I'm a freak about it. So I was like getting up early and I was watching them getting closer and closer and closer together, you know, throughout the previous month. And then the day of the planetary parade, the day that it met the very top, the day that everybody would say, okay, this is it. This is the planetary parade. I woke up just before sunup and I was like, Lord, I wonder, I wonder what you're doing today. Today has got to be a crazy cool day, God, that you would line all this stuff up. And like, I wonder what's going to happen today. So I went outside and I went down by my barn and I stood out there on a fence and I watched them all rise and it was all beautiful. And it was like, man, that's crazy cool. Dad, gum it, that's amazing. And I was just giving glory to the Lord. Then, Alan, I went into my barn and I have an actual television inside my barn and I turned it on. And again, this is the day of the planetary parade. I turn it on and boom, it says Roe v. Wade overturned. No, that wasn't on the same day. Come on. It was these, it was that day. I give you my word. And I honestly thought, I, I thought no, that's not what it says. What it actually says, it says Roe v. Wade, you know, there, because there had just been a rumor that they were thinking about, you know, uh, doing a ruling on it. And I thought it said that, but it says Roe v. Wade overturned historic day in the United States. And I was like, and can I tell you, it was in the midst of Gay Pride Month, and it was in the midst of while they were doing their parades all over the United States, God Almighty had his own parade in the heavens, and he overturned that thing at a time. At a time when it was impossible to do so, brother, because they had uh, the, all, all three branches of the government were left. They're all left. And God Almighty did his own parade and turned over Roe v. Wade. The heavens declare the glory of God. Come on. Come on. If you don't think God is speaking through the heavens <laughs> after that explanation, I don't know what to do with you. And if you want to really want to flip your lid, then you realize that that was all planned and scheduled from the foundation yeah. of the world when he set the stars yeah. in their orbit. When he said everything moving, he scheduled it for this moment. What's he got scheduled for this weekend? I want to know what's in the stars this weekend. That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, we're going to be talking about those things and we're going to go through a whole bunch of those things. And we're going to talk about how it all actually works. We're not talking about new age. We're talking about glorifying King Jesus. We're talking about how the tabernacle was set up in the wilderness was mm -hmm. according to the same exact pattern. I'm going to show you that all 12 tribes were stationed around the tabernacle in the wilderness, exactly like there are 12 constellations. Uh, within the Maseroth, within the heavens of Moses lined all that out. And whenever, whenever Jacob was, was declaring his inheritance to his sons, there are four cardinal, there are four cardinal constellations within what you and I would call the Zodiac, because that's the Greek word, but the Bible calls it the Maseroth because that's actually the Hebrew word. And there are four cardinal constellations. And one of them is an eagle. One of them is a bull. One of them is a, uh, a man. And one of them is a lion. Well, that's also the four faces of the cherubim. Yeah. You know, like, what is that? What is that all about? Well, whenever Jacob blessed all 12 of his sons to Reuben, he says the man and that that represents the constellation that we know as Aquarius. And there's a man that is pouring out water. And then that's actually a part of that prophecy is water. And then he calls Judah a lion's whelp. Right. And then he and then he refers to uh, Joseph, which would later become Manasseh, he refers to him as a bull, right? And then Asher, he also refers to him as a snake, which, which, which that's a strange word, but, but in the ancient Hebrew and, the, and in the ancient Greek, a snake and, a, and an eagle 
are interchangeable words because it means a celestial being. It means a heavenly being. It means a heavenly host. You know, the, the serpent in the original Garden of Eden, right? A, a heavenly being, right? So it's like, okay. So it's like, dude, he put all that. No, they like. Why would you? Why would Jacob say that? And why would Jacob include that? Why would Moses position everybody around the tabernacle like that? Why? Because the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens, actually, the pictures that are that are in the heavens is exactly the same gospel that is within the Bible. It's just the gospel and the stars. And the reason, Alan, is because the author is the same. The author of the heavens and the author of the Bible is the same as that person. And the scriptures do testify of Jesus. Well, I'm excited about getting into not only them testifying about Jesus, but what they say about the hour we're living in right now and the end time specifically. The fact that there's end time prophecy in the stars. And by the way, I just saw that Trina is watching um, right now. She's a part of the ODX family. She's also part of the Encounter Today family. Trina, I think you're in, yes. I don't know if you're in Virginia, or you're, you're not in the Carolinas, but she's going to be with us this weekend. She's traveling. She's getting on. There she is. She's going to be with us for this prophecy conference. So we're so excited. I'm telling everybody, get, get your plane ticket and just come life changing. You will never be the same again. And I believe in this season of revival, we're going to see a mighty outpouring this weekend of the Holy ghost deliverance, salvation. It's going to be amazing. Well, I'm believing the Lord and I'm definitely going to show up. You know, I'm coming out there with you, Pastor Allen. Number one, I'm preaching here tonight at Open Door and I'm going through John chapter 20 and I'm doing that. And then uh, to, and then tomorrow I'm going to be going to a planetarium tomorrow. And there's a there's a planetarium that is in Fort Worth that has, invi that has invited me to come speak. And I'm going to be on. checking that out. And yeah, that's going to be a lot of fun. man. Have you done that and before? Then, Have you spoken at a planetarium before? I haven't. I haven't. I'm, I, I I really want to know this cat that has this thing because it's like my big dream is to have my own planetarium and I will. I'll do it. I'm going to pull it off. You'll see. Yeah. By the grace of God, I want to do it. But uh, with all I said, man, on Friday, I'm coming out and I'm joining you on Friday and on Friday night. And then I'm with you on Saturday. And then Saturday afternoon, I'm hopping on a plane. I'm flying back here. We're having a big event here locally um, that's called Spark in the Park, and it's a big giant kids outreach. We're, we're doing that here on Saturday. Sunday, I'm getting up and I'm doing two services on Sunday morning. Then Sunday afternoon, I'm flying down to Houston and I'm going to be doing a, a special service down in Houston on Sunday night down at the Open Door Houston campus. And that's going to be happening down there. And then Monday, I come back and it starts all over again. I'll say all this to say this. I'm an end time guy and I'm not demoralized. I'm come an on. end time guy and I'm busy. I am an end time guy and I'm trying to get stuff done. I'm motivated because Jesus is coming back soon. You're not hiding your head in the sand. You're not telling people to divest, no. sell their house because Jesus is going to come no. back tomorrow. Not, that's, that's not what you're doing. No, no brother. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, there was, what I'm doing is I'm, <laughs> I'm telling everybody, get up. That's what I'm telling everybody. Get up. That's Man, been the an time interesting, is short. an interesting dispersion that's been cast on those who believe in the rapture of the church by prominent, one prominent theologian. I was having this conversation with them on social media. They said, uh, you know, people, they won't invest. They don't focus on the future. They don't plan. I said, can you name me one prominent end time yeah, Bible who? prophecy teacher who does that? No, I can't do yeah, that. Who is I that? Yeah. No, you they, can't they do can't that. Name it. It's there, there's it, it's a myth and it's a stigma. It's kind of like everybody saying that Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. There's no yeah. place in the Bible that says Mary Magdalene was a prostitute. There's no evidence of that whatsoever. It's just like, well, she had a devil, so it had to be sexual. So all these lazy theologians and people who have lazy faith that do not want to believe in the imminent and the glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ, they stigma us as saying, hey, well, these guys, those guys don't get anything done. They're all just sitting around with their head in the sand. Okay, well, I might get a little bit fired up over that because last year, while I was preaching in time theology, we dug 133 water wells. We, we, we rescued over 3,000 boys and girls out of sexual slavery. I preached uh, three and four uh, services every single week. I went to Uganda. I went to Mexico. I went to, uh, I, I went all over the planet Earth. Uh, we saw thousands of people saved. We baptized thousands of people last year. Uh, our food bank fed 150,000 people here locally. Our food bank in Nicaragua fed over 100,000 people a month every Every single month, uh, we did television shows. We did radio shows. I wrote two books last year. I got four kids. I got seven grandkids and I got a church of thousands of people. And now I'm talking about Monday morning before seven o'clock. 
Like what I find is the people that are not motivated are the people that are not looking for Jesus to come back. Yeah, that was because and of your end time eschatology, is. not in spite of it. Yes. Because you believe yeah, Jesus man. is coming, you're doing all those things. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. And I mean, and my teams are crazier than I am. Uh, yeah. Man, dude, dude, we saw that. We saw that miracle that happened down on the Amazon last year, man, where I was, I was out in Florida, Pastor Allen. And I had a dream from the Lord and the dream that I had was it was the future. And in the future I had died and I was just going into heaven and they were having like a pregame interview, a postgame interview with me. Mm -hmm. And this dude, which I knew to be an angel, he was just sitting and he was sitting behind his desk and he had a big, nice camera. And I could tell all of heaven was watching and listening though, though I couldn't see heaven. And he said, Troy, Troy, what an incredibly favored life you had. Oh my gosh, how much the father loved you, man, dude, dude, good job. Way to go, man. He, I was like, I know I'm so excited about seeing Jesus. He says, well, I just want to ask you a few questions. Hey, and he knew so much about my life, Pastor Allen. And then he, he asked me this, what do you think your top 10 miracles were and I was like oh and in my mind I could just blow up you know all these miracles and they were so great and then he asked me this question what do you think the miracles are that you missed hmm. and I instantly knew in my dream that King Jesus had set me up for so many miracles and to see heaven invade earth in so many cool ways and all these crazy cool things and I knew that I had missed so many and while I did not experience any shame I did experience great loss hmm. And I was like, oh, man. And he said, what do you think? What do you think the number one miracle is that you lost? And I told him in my dream, I said, had I made it down to the Amazon jungle in the year 22, right after we had just rescued that little girl, that nine-year-old little girl, we just pulled her out of a sex trafficking ring. And there she is. Good job, guys. They didn't even know I was going to tell this story. And they, I, I, that's her, and she was nonverbal. And, I mean, that little girl had been part of a porno ring, and our teams rescued her. She was one of thousands of children that uh, we rescued last year. I told this angel this, Pastor Allen. I told him, I said, hey, if I would have made it down there during that time, I would have walked up to her. She would have recognized the father's love. And she, and I would have said, I would have said, come over here, come over here and hug me. And she would have got up and she would have come and hugged me. Now, this is a child nobody, nobody could touch. This was a child that wouldn't have anything to do with people. She was so traumatized. And then I told the angel in my dream in the future about the past, which was right now. I said, I said, uh, then you know what would have happened after that? And he said, what? And I said, I would have told her, you know what? Uh, I think her name is Marciella. I said, I said, Marciella, Franciella. I said, Franciella, it's okay for you to start talking now. And then she would just would have just started talking. And she wouldn't have, she would have no longer been uh nonverbal and God would have completely healed her and set her free. And the angel looked at me, Pastor Allen, and he goes, Yeah, that was a big one. And I said, yeah, that was a really big one. I hate to miss that. And then boom, I woke up and I was in Florida. I was actually in Key West hmm. and I was with my bride and we were scheduled to fly back to uh, DFW that day. And I said, Leanna, I got to go down to the Amazon. And she said, well, then you got to go. I told her about the dream. And I said, baby, I'm going to see this miracle happen. I found a flight to Columbia and I flew all the way down to Columbia, spent the night there, walked around <laughs> the capital city looking for a hotel at three o'clock in the morning, which is not a fun thing to do. I had my son fly down and meet me down there. Next morning I got up, we flew down to the Amazon. I met my team. I went in, we crossed the border into Brazil. We went to our brand new rescue house that I had just bought. And at that time, I think we had about, well, when I, when I, when I, Whenever we first built the rescue home, Pastor Allen, uh, we didn't have any kids in it. We have over 100 kids in wow. that one single home now. Over 100 kids that we've rescued out of pornography rings and out of child prostitution. And so uh, I went there, got there. My teams were there. And I said, where is she? They took me over there to her. She was just sitting up against the wall and she was eating ice cream and she wasn't talking to anybody. And then she locked eyes on me. And I said, Franciella, come here. I'm your papa. Come over here and see me. And she smiled. And I thought, here she comes. And she jumped up and she came straight to me and she hugged me. I think I actually have a picture. There it is. There, there it is. That little girl that nobody could touch saw me. And within five seconds of her seeing her, 
of her seeing me, brother, the spirit of God came upon her and she saw, she saw a daddy's love towards her. And then I got to look at her and I went, okay, well, there's part one, there's part one. And that's, but, but in my dream, I said that I would just give her permission to talk and she'd start talking. And I said, Franciella, it's okay if you start talking now. And she went, Troy. And then she just went, gang, 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 gang. And she became little Miss Chatty Kathy. And that's her right there. That was moments after she'd been healed. And then she started telling me in Portuguese, which I had a translator there. She just started telling me, oh, I'll take care of this little boy over here. And he's too little to take care of himself. So I take care of him. And that girl over there, I share all my food with her. And this person over here and yada, 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 yada. And dude, it is one of the greatest miracles I've ever seen in my whole life. And all of that kind of stuff. I mean, imagine the logistics of taking a non-scheduled trip to the Amazon jungle, yada, yada, yada. I'm telling you, brother, we live that life here, and we believe that Jesus is coming back at any moment. Yes. Yes. We see signs, miracles, and wonders, and we still believe that Jesus is coming back at any moment. There's a lifestyle wrapped around that revelation that is glorious, it is miraculous, and there is a crown. It's so glorious that there's a crown awaiting all those who love his appearing and all those who have that lifestyle. That's why we've got to inject this into the body of Christ right now in this crucial hour. We've got, we've got to make people fall in love once again with the return of Amen. Jesus, with the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's time. Well, I want to tell you, and I'm, I'm going to tell all of your camp out there this week that the second you hear this trumpet blow, either there's, there's, there's two things that's going to happen. Everybody that's watching either there's actually one of three things. Either you're going to come to my funeral or I'm going to hear about your funeral or you're going to hear that I never had a funeral or I'm going to hear that you never had a funeral. <laughs> so it's like, what? what? What are you talking about? I'm just telling you this. You will indeed either assume room temperature as far as your flesh goes mm. and then you will be at the Lord or you will hear the trumpet blow. And in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, Every single priority that you have ever had changes. Everything that was a big deal no longer is a big deal in that one single moment. And how you know Jesus and how you walked with Jesus and how you loved Jesus and how you served Jesus and how you expanded his kingdom and how you knew his word and how you went after his heart. Those are the things that matter at that moment. And friends, we don't have time to fool around. Hmm. We we don't have time to fool around. Jesus is coming back soon. Yeah, this was Paul's revelation. Whenever he's he's giving an impartation of how he was so successful. How do you keep going? How do you suffer shipwreck? And how do you are you stoned and left for dead and that you you keep going? And he said, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. So the the power behind his persuasion was an anticipation that at any moment. He was going to stand before God in eternity and give an account for the deeds that he's done in his flesh, the judgment seat of Christ, and that revelation of that end time moment and the imminence of it drove him to push past the persecution, past the pain, past every problem that he faced to accomplish something that was truly historic and earth shaking. And I think there's going to be a lot of Apostle Pauls that God raises up in this final hour because it's needed. Well, you know what, man? We've actually been gabbing for nearly an entire hour. Can you believe how fast this hour has gone? Man, time flies. And that's that's how this last hour, this final hour is going to go. It's going to go so fast because I'm going to tell you, time is speeding up. And that's actually that's actually a prophetic word. And that's, that's part of Bible revelation of the yes. end time, that the end times, that the days would be shortened. Well, mm -hmm. time is relative. Time is relative to all kinds of things. And one of the things that time is relative to is the return of King Jesus. Time began as soon as man needed Jesus on the day that you to the tree of knowledge of good and evil, you shall surely die. And as soon as man needed redemption, boom, time began for us. When does time end? Well, time ends at the great white throne judgment when all sin is dealt with and it's over and it's finished with. And I want to tell you, the closer that we get to the return of King Jesus, the more time is speeding up. And the Bible says that that's for our benefit. 
And the reason why that that's for our benefit is the same exact reason, Pastor Allen, why God Almighty took man from living to be 969 years old, Methuselah, to declaring 120 in a very short time and then taking us down to 70 years. It's like, why is it to our advantage that we only live 70 years instead of living to a thousand years? Because you know what? You don't have enough time to get caught on a bad day anymore. Yeah, wow. I mean, you, you, it's, it's for your benefit. It's like, this has been my understanding of men. Oh, they get in their 300s and they tend to twist off. Or, oh, I don't know, somewhere around 670 years old, you know what? They tend to get bitter or they start messing with Nephilim or something like that. What's real is God Almighty shortens the time for the benefit of believers. And mm -hmm. time is definitely speeding up today. You know what we didn't even really know when we, when we labeled this the final hour? prophecy conference we're transitioning as a church this just happened where a door opened for us to launch a new church the same weekend that is our last sunday morning service at our current facility the You're very crazy. next week yeah we're launching a new church that's doing saturday night church in charlotte north carolina so it is literally that weekend is our final hour as a ministry as we know it as we transition into a new season, I think it's going to be the same for all those that show up and all those that are part of this. This is the season of the open door and God is about to loose you into a radically new wine skin and a radically new experience with him. Let's all enjoy it together. Let's celebrate it together this weekend. Get there all across the country, around the world. People are coming from Canada, from India, from all across the United States. Be with us there in Charlotte, North Carolina this Friday night. Oh my goodness, it's gonna be a good time. Which by the way, Charlotte, North Carolina is where the last great American eclipse left the United States. That's where it left, was right there. That was where it left. And so <laughs> where it finally left. And that was exactly, do you remember how, what was the time frame on that? It was an hour and 33 minutes long, right? It was exactly one hour and 33 minute um, celestial event across the United States. Uh, the shadow was 70 feet, was 70 miles wide. This one that is about to take place on October the 14th of this year that ends at Corpus Christi uh, is a 90 minute event. And uh, we're going to go, I, anyway, I'll talk to you guys about all that. But I want to just, I do want to remind everybody that is a part of ODX.TV, friends, for all of my friends and my partners and people that work with us all over the planet Earth to save boys and girls out of sexual slavery and to preach this glorious gospel. If you are a third stage level, you'll be able to see this for free on ODX.TV. You'll be able to do that and I encourage you guys to do that. And everybody that signs up for stage two or stage three, I got a book that I'm going to send you and uh, a book that I love to give away. It's called Best of the Brewer. And it has to do with, the, it's, a, it's an accumulation of my favorite uh, newspaper articles that I wrote in my nationally syndicated newspaper column. I, I wrote that, I did that for 15 years. And uh, I'm going to send that to you free. So go there and check it out, odx.tv. If you sign up for third stage over there, you can actually see the conference this weekend there. And I'm super, super excited about that. P Pastor Allen, what a great, what a great privilege, man, to have you with me today. Man, it's always a blast to chat with you and to be with the ODX family. You guys are amazing. Your staff is amazing. Your church is amazing. And we're just, we're just excited to have you come to the Carolinas and impart some of that in this region. Well, nothing could be finer. <laughs> than to be in Carolina. That's right. Okay. I didn't know. If, I knew, nothing, nothing gets past you, man. Nothing gets past you. <laughs> you got to wake up pretty early in the morning. <laughs> hey man, I do have to ask you this though, man. Have you seen? Did you see that Charisma magazine? Yeah, you helped me make a big deal out of the the night that I preached on the Nephilim and I preached on the DNA deception and the seed war, which I'm going to be talking a lot about out there at uh, your because that's a huge end time event. But I, did you see that Charisma magazine put that on the, all over their website and blasted all no, over? No, come this on. Week? Yeah, they well, actually. I did. feel I like think, we I had a part in that. Praise God. You did have a part of that. And that's why I'm asking you that. So people started sending to us, hey, man, do you know that you're in Charisma Magazine this week? I'm like, no, I did oh, not. Oh, there it is. These cats, look, there it is right there. And uh, that's great. Hey, man, that's cool that you guys have that up there. That's cool. And so, yeah, they put that on there. I think we had 100,000 views today. Is that right? Yeah. So I think we had 100,000 views today. Now, have you which released is the extended interview you and I did on the Nephilim yet? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you know what's also funny, man? Is uh, people from a whole bunch of other podcasts because that that thing because so many people have viewed it, they're like, "Hey, will you come on my podcast and talk to me about this? I want to hear about giants. I want to hear about the DNA uh, um, um, deception. I want to hear about this. Want to hear like like I'm an expert or something? I preached one message on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, when people see the extended interview that I did with you on this subject, it's going to blow their mind. It's, it's, it's on, and you did, you did interview. I, I totally forgot that you interviewed me on this. Oh yeah. I totally yeah. forgot about it. It's soon to be released. I'm sure on your end and on ours, it'll be on ODX and we're going to release it too. But it was like an hour yeah, and a half Hunter, of me that, asking you questions. Yeah. So I mean, I will, I will let you know all about that. I will yeah. let you know all about that. Yeah. Because man, we got to get that out of there. We got to get that out. So I'm going to take, we need it. To jump I'm take it and because... do a history channel, like edit with it. I'm going to throw in all the B roll. I'm going to break in like William Shatner and ask some questions that it's going to be awesome. Mm. Come on. I dare you, man. It's going to be crazy. Cool. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you, sir, for joining me today. It's been a privilege to have you. How do people contact you? How do people look you up and uh, how does all that work for you? EncounterToday.com. And if you're in the Carolinas, we're launching a church resurrection weekend, April the 8th. You can go to EncounterToday.com or you can go to EncounterCharlotte.com for more information. Instagram. Instagram. Well, I can understand. Check us out I on Instagram. I totally we, understand you. We just blew what? up on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I, I, can, I can totally understand you uh, trying to launch a church on Easter because Easter is just way too easy. You know, <laughs> I'm I mean, always Easter, Yeah. Yeah. You know, Easter is way too easy. No competition. (laughs) That's amazing. Well, listen, man, we celebrate you. I will see you on Friday in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I can't wait to see you there, brother. It's going to be awesome. We'll see you there. Thank you so much, Pastor Allen. God bless you, brother. Bye-bye. Well, Pastor Alan DiDio of Encounter Today, one of my favorite people on the planet Earth. Well, you know, I, I know him personally. And one of the best things I can say about him is one of the best things I can say about any dude is this. He's an amazing daddy. Oh my gosh, he's a good dad to his kids. And his kids are extraordinary. I love his kids so much. Of course, his bride has something to do with that as well. But uh, I'm just kind of making a big deal out of Pastor Allen right now. He's he's an incredible human being. I encourage you guys to look him up. And then look up the interviews that we have done. I'll be talking to Hunter about, hey, man, when are we releasing this? And what are we doing with that? Uh, Hunter said that he's got some ideas for it because we're about to launch a brand new podcast. And uh, I'm going to be talking to you guys about that later but you'll see it's something else, man, that we're working on because we just don't have enough to do. You know, that's, that's why, because we just, we just like, man, we're bored. We got to do something. So anyway, but no, we will do a brand new podcast and you guys will be seeing about uh, all of that. And I do have to remind everybody, I will be preaching at Open Door Church here tonight. And I want to remind r- remind you guys that I'm going through John chapter 20. We're going through the resurrection story. I'm going verse by verse by verse by verse. And uh, we're doing that tonight. And that's going to be a lot of fun. If you're in the DFW area, come on out, man, and be a part of this. If you're like, hey, man, I wish I could come to Texas, but I can't get a visa. Uh, all you got to do is go to Mexico and cross the border. And you can just be here in just a couple of days. They'll let you right across. Yep, it's happening with millions of people right now. So come out here and be a part of Open Door Church here tonight. And then this coming Sunday, I'm going to be preaching both messages. It is Palm Sunday, this coming Sunday, and we're going to have a special time of communion. And I'm going to be going through what that means. And about, and it actually means being totally dependent upon the presence of Jesus. Like, what are you talking about? You'll see and how I tie all that into the Ark of the Covenant and what happened 1,000 years to the moment earlier, whenever King David brought the Ark of the Covenant back into Jerusalem and danced before the Lord. That was literally 1,000 years to the day. I'm going to tell you all about that this coming weekend and what that means about what that means to us today. But I really hope that you will join me out with Pastor Allen this coming Friday and Saturday out there. And I really hope that you guys will go to Encounter Today, sign up for that. It's a free conference, but but you do need to sign up for it. Um, and then also say this too, man, that you can watch it for free on odx.tv for all of my third stage partners. If you are a third stage partner, I always put my conferences up there for free and we watch and you can see those things live whenever that is available. Yes. And uh, that's going to be this week as well. All right. Uh, so Miss Lisa, are you still in the room? I am here. And man, that was 
that was fire. You and Bishop Alan DiDio together is like dynamite. I'm so excited to watch the live stream Friday. I did hear it would be live streamed on Friday. I'm going to watch it on ODX.TV and I cannot wait. We're going to be watching it in Oklahoma. Oh, it's going to be good. No, it's going to be good. It's yes. going to be a little bit crazy because uh, I'm going <laughs> to, it's going to be a little bit crazy. I mean, I'm just going to just get up there and just explode on everybody. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to supernova. And uh, I know I'm going to be meeting a bunch of first time people that I've never met before. And I know I'm also going to be meeting some old friends as well. And that's going to be, that's going to be a great privilege. It's going to be crazy cool. So I want to meet you guys in person, come out and uh, see us out there. So exciting, so exciting. And then I just want to remind everyone watching right now, this is usually only on our private community called The Prophetic Life. This is what we do. We dive into prophetic things, dream interpretations, and so much more. So if you're catching this right now on YouTube or our Facebook or you're on ODX.TV, we want to let you know that this is usually only for our private community, The Prophetic Life. So if you're not signed up yet, go to ODX.TV and sign up for Stage 2 or three on our page and you can become a member of the prophetic life and all of any money that we make within this platform goes directly to saving little boys and little girls out of sexual slavery so join the tribe join the family and go to odx.tv today to sign up and i also wanted to remind everyone that this saturday if you're here local then we want you at spark in the park this is going to be so so much fun it's an easter family picnic down the road at hidden creek sports complex Tell the neighbors, bring the grandkids. It's going to be amazing. And then we will see you all this Sunday for Palm Sunday. We are going to have a kids choir. Pastor Troy is going to bring an incredible, incredible sermon. We have a new foyer for the, um, the children's foyer. We just revamped the whole thing. The baby's nursery. It's beautiful. So bring your family out for Palm Sunday. And then, of course, the next Sunday is our Risen Service and Open Door Easter Experience. Invite everyone. It's going to be a phenomenal time. All right, Miss Lisa. Thank you so much. And I call you blessed in Jesus' name. And uh, um, thank you. Just thank you so much. And I see you across the room over there. I can see you over there. Hi, man, over there. I see you over there. Okay, <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, guys, this is about it, man. We This was a long show today, and we had a lot of stuff to discuss. And we... Pfft, you know, all this was just from the hip. This is all just stuff that we're just talking about because Alan is so anointed and he's got the presence of the Lord in him. And uh, I just get fired up when I'm around him. So guys, I hope to see you here tonight. I hope to see you here this Sunday. And until the next time I see you, I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody.